Welcome to this code conversation about simulating a text file in Python. Imagine the following scenario. You're developing an application that'll read information from files on disk. Not the most uncommon scenario. You, of course, also want to write tests to make sure that everything works as expected. However, when writing these tests, you run into some issues. Reading a file from disk is inherently slow. The file system can look quite differently on different machines. And you may not even have access to create files in a standard location on disk when your tests run on different machines. In this code conversation, I'll walk you through using Python's string IO class from the standard library IO module. String IO is an in-memory file-like object that you can use to simulate a text file on disk. In certain cases, it can be a good solution to reduce time spent on input-output operations and for writing tests for file interactions that can reliably run in any environment. Let's get started. Let's take a look at a small example. Here I have a function. It's just an example function that takes as an input a file object and then does something with that file object and returns some output, right? In this case, what it does is it reads this file object and then just uppercases the text content that's in there. And therefore, it's aptly named as upcase file content. So again, this is just an example, and I also have an example text file here, and now I want to upcase these. So what you would do when you just normally open the file, you would use the open function, and then just run upcase file content. Let's try it out in the terminal. I'm going to use the ptpython shell but anything that I do in here works also if you want to use a different shell. So first I will need to import this function into my REPL session. I'm gonna type from process import upcase file content. And it's a good practice to open a file using a context manager. So I'm gonna use the with statement and say with open, put in the file name. This is example.txt. I'll open it in read mode. And I'll call it F for short here. And now I want to call upcase file content and pass it that file object, right? And let's also print the output so it looks the same. All right, so this is a way I would use this upcase file content function. And you see it, it works. It takes the input from example.txt and then upcases it. All right. What I'm working with here is a file that takes as an input a file object. But now what if you want to simulate this file object? You don't actually have that file and maybe you're working in an environment where you can't create that file. For example, for tests, we're going to look at that a little later as well. But for now, I want to show you the solution and how you can simulate such a file object like this example.txt using Python and just Python standard library. Let's do that in the next lesson. So a way that you can simulate such a file object is by importing string IO from the IO module. So we'll say from IO import string IO. And string IO is a file-like object that lives inside your memory. So I can create this, let's call it fake file. And it'll be a string IO object and I'll pass it some text. Now, if I look at fake file, you can see that it's a string IO object to certain memory location. And the fun thing with this is that it basically supports everything that file-like object, like the one you get from using open, also supports. So I can read this fake file in the same way and you can see that I get as an output the text that's that I passed it. Note that if you try to read it again, it's empty because just like another file-like object, Python reads to the end and then there's nothing more to read. So therefore you get the empty string as an output. But just like with a, another file-like object, you can also go back to the beginning by using dot seek and passing in zero that goes back to the beginning. And now I can read again and I get the output another time. Now let's go back to the beginning again. And I want to show you that you can also use a function that takes usually a file-like object and does something with it, right? In the same way, 
with the string IO object. So I can call upcase file content and pass it my fake file. And you can see that it processes it just like it did before with the object that you got returned when using open. So using string IO is a way that you can simulate working with a file object on disk, but instead this fake file object only lives in your memory. And I mentioned that string IO shares a lot with the object that you get when using open. So in the next lesson, let's take a look at what these two objects are, how they're similar, and how they're different from each other. All right, so here we are in a new Python REPL session. And I'm going to start off by importing IO because that's the module that we're working with. And now I want to show you the difference between the file-like object that you get when you use open and then the string IO object that you've seen in the previous lesson. So let's start by calling this one a real file because the object is built from opening a real file that lives somewhere on your disk. We had one called example.txt and opened this one in read mode. All right, so this real file now is an instance of text IO wrapper that lives in the IO module. This is what you always get when you open a text file using, for example, the open function. And then you also got to know something that only lives in memory, and I'm going to call that one fake file. And you created it by saying io.string io and then passing some text in there. I'll just say hello, comma, world. All right. And this fake file is a string IO object, lives at a certain memory location. Now, you've seen in the previous lesson that both the text IO wrapper and the string IO object have a lot of things in common. You can read both of them, you can seek with them, you can also write to both of them. So, what's the reason that they share so many methods? And the reason is that they both inherit from the same parent class, which is IO text IO base. That's the class that both of these classes inherit from. And let's confirm that by using is instance and passing it first our real file and then io.text IO base. And I see that. Python returns true. And if I do is instance on the fake file, io text io base, then I also get true. So both of them inherit from this io text io base. And this is why they share so many methods and why you can do almost the same things with both of these objects. Now, the differences are somewhat negligible, but if you're curious to see what the differences are, you can play around with using dir and then creating a set out of that. Maybe we call that string IO methods. And then we have the I'll do set of string IO methods minus a set of the text IO methods. And then you can see that set state and get value are two names that only exist for string IO objects. And if you do the opposite, then you'll see which ones only exist for the text IO wrapper object. But most of them are the same. So if you look at string IO methods, you can see that there's a bunch more methods that exist on these objects, and most of them are the same between both of them because they inherit from the same parent class. OK, and that's just a short dive into the differences between the two. It's not that important. For practicality, you can basically assume that you can do with a string IO object what you can also do with a text IO wrapper object, so the, the one that you get from opening a real file. And that gives you a couple of opportunities that you can use in testing. I've mentioned that these string IO objects could be useful for writing unit tests for some of your functions. So let's go ahead and write a unit test for the upcase file content function and mimic the file object using a string IO object. 
so that you don't actually need to work with a real file on disk. So I'll create a new file that I call test.py. And then I will import unit test and from process import upcase, what's it called? Upcase file content. I'll create a class. Okay, so I have the basic structure for writing a unit test for this upcase file content function that lives in my process module. And now, instead of needing to work with a real file, I want to create a string I object that mimics a file and lives inside of memory, just to make it easier for this test to run and also quicker than if I would have to deal with input-output operations on my disk. So to do this, I will create an, let's call it fake file again because we've been working with that before. And I'll say string, well, I need to first import the IO module. So I'll say import IO. And then here I can use IO string IO and pass it some text. Hello world in lowercase. And now I want to say that I would expect, expect that string would be hello comma world because I want my upcase file content function to upcase all the characters that are in that file. And now I can self.assert equal the output of upcase file content when passing it the fake file object should be the same as the expected uppercased hello world. All right, so this would be a quick test that uses IO string IO to mimic a file on disk that let's assume that usually upcase file content would work with files on disk, but you want to write a test for it that can run in all sorts of environments that maybe don't necessarily have disk access, then you could do it like this. Let's go ahead and check whether this works. Python m unit test test. And you can see that it ran one test and my test passed. So that's great. You've created a unit test for your upcase file content function that works just in memory and doesn't actually need to have access to any sort of file on disk. Of course, this only works if your function expects a file object as an input and then only operates on that file object. If your function would take a path as an input and then do the file handling inside of the body, then this would work in the same way. And in the next lesson, we'll take a quick look at what you can do if you're working with a function like that.